Hey crafters, DM Scotty here. Good to have you on the DM's Craft Short Tip. Uh, I hope everybody had a great holidays. Uh, I had a, I had a good one too. Uh, I had a little, little bout with the uh, with an illness there at the end, so uh, I didn't get posted on Sunday, but uh, gonna post today, so feel much better. Now today is kind of a different type of video uh, on Short Tip. Um, I, the object I'm going to show you, I've already crafted. It's already it's already done. So we're, we're not going to actually do any crafting at the table, but I'm going to explain what I did. And there might be some more of this as we start to uh, get, get, get to a combination of techniques. Like this is, this is, these are all techniques you've already seen me do in other videos. So the culmination will kind of add up. And when I show you this, my, my hope is to give you ideas of what you can do with the techniques that I've already shown you to create new and cool stuff um, from just those basic techniques. So um, this is a really cool trap door, uh, very large, uh, deadly looking uh, trap door. So I want to show you that and let's go to the table. First I'll explain um, what, how I crafted it and then I'll explain how I'm going to use it in the game. So let's go to the table and talk about the, tra the trap door. So hey guys, here's the door I was talking about. You can see it has a lot of really cool detail. Uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like next to some figures for scale, but right now I just want to talk about the construction of the door. So I just did it like a standard door that I did in my other video. I used a piece of cardstock. You can't see it from this angle, but I used a piece of cardstock and did uh, texture paint on the other side. You'll see it when I stand it up. I also um, glued two pieces of cardboard together to make the door extra thick. So there you can see it's kind of thick. Um, you could use extra thick cardboard, I just didn't have it on hand, so I just glued two um, regular pieces of cardboard together. And then I covered it with the uh, cardstock, the edging with the cardstock. Now the, how I got this nice detail on the door, this is all just cardstock and paint. So like a normal door, you would just have, you might just put some bands and a little, maybe a lock or something on it. Little, little, just a little detail. But this one, I kind of went overboard because I want it's like a trap door. So you can see it kind of has blades that come up and I've got some locks uh, for the characters to try to open. So how I, how I got all this on here was I cut out a piece of cardstock that was the exact same size as the door. And then I drew a grid on the cardstock, a half inch by half inch grid. And I did the same grid on the bare door, okay? So when I drew all this detail on the cardstock, I simply would cut out a row of, in a half inch row of all the detail, and then put, place it on the board, or on the door, uh, the same way that it was on the cardstock. So that was, a, that was a nice way to apply all the pieces to this door in the right, in the right spot. Uh, the grid really helped. This is a technique that uh, painters use for uh, murals. They'll do a smaller picture and they'll put it on a big wall. And the easiest way to do that is just do a grid and then you can draw, you know, this, and you draw a grid on the smaller picture and you draw a grid on the bigger picture or on the wall and then you can fill in the wall much easier than just trying to freehand it on the wall. So, of course, it isn't as big as a wall, but, you know, it's the same, same idea. Um, and that's how I did this. Now, the other side... Um, I just have some, just some banding on it because it's, that's the back side of the door. But I didn't want to leave it blank. I wanted to have something on it. So I just put, I just put some metal banding. So to finish out the door, I needed to paint it. So basically I just based it black like I normally do. Then I uh, painted it with the sponge on both sides. And the gray got on the, um, the metal parts, but that's okay. I just repainted over them with the gun metal. Then I did a little bit of detail with some black and that, and that kind of thing. And I also used a little bit of um, uh, red uh, umber, um, which is kind of a, or actually it's a rust oxide color. So I just used that on some little parts of the door to give it some, some nice little age. Uh, I also did some streaks coming down with, a, with very, very watered down black did some of the crevices and that kind of thing. So that's how I got the detail on this door. And I think it came out really nice. But right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the table and I'm gonna set a couple minis so you can see the scale of this thing and I'm gonna talk about how I'm gonna use it in play. So here we go, here's the door uh, ready for play. Uh, I put a couple miniatures next to it so you can see the, the enormous scale of this door. Uh, looks great. Um, 
Uh, hopefully the, the uh, characters will be a little afraid when they approach this door because it looks like there are some blades on the door, uh, which there are. So it's, it's kind of imposing looking. The trick with this door is there are three locks on the door that the, that the person who's un trying to unlock it would have to do in succession. So they gotta, they gotta do all three lock checks and if they fail, then the door attacks them or anybody near the door. So these blades flip out and they slash at anybody uh, near the door. Uh, that also goes for attacking the door. If somebody attacks the door, uh, they'll also get attacked. I would tend to make this door either um, highly resistant to magic or immune to magic um, because you don't want some spellcaster just using uh, you know, a spell and just getting by your, your clever trap. So I would do something like that. Uh, if you feel that your, your players are having a problem, you could have, um, or might need a little help, you could have uh, a clue on the door that might help uh, give them a bonus to their checks to open the door or that kind of thing. Now this door is stone, so it's, if they attack the door, it's, it's, in my game it would be pretty much impossible for the players to break the door down. But in your game you might allow them to be able to break it down. So, but yeah, in my game I'm, there's no chance of breaking it down. Your sword's just going to bang off this thing. It's, you know, um, it's, you know, three feet th thick stone. You're not going to cut through that. You know, you'll be, you know, and especially the thing is going to attack you back if you try to. So, you know, you're going to probably be dead before you do. So, you know, that's, not an, that's really not an option, attacking it. Um, and like I say, you, I would have it highly resistant to spells or immune to spells, just so they don't uh, use the, uh, the cheaty way out and the, the, the uh, easy way out and use a spell just to get through it. But also on, on this kind of thing, I'd like to talk about that um, you don't want to impede the player's progress through a dungeon by throwing this in the main um, pathway to the dungeon, especially if, if it's like a linear dungeon. If it's a linear dungeon and the players move up to this and they just can't get through it, they, roll, they just have bad luck or they just can't find the clue or you know whatever, um, then you're done. I mean, the players have to leave. And that's not fun for anybody. So generally what I do with this kind of thing is I have it like a, it's almost like a side quest or a side area where uh, the players could discover maybe some treasure, maybe a cool clue, uh, something, something neat. So, um, or maybe nothing at all if you're, you know, if you want to be that way. But um, don't put it in the way, you know, of the players, the main way that they have to get to, you know, if, if, if it's a dungeon, the way they have to get to the final part of the dungeon because you're just kind of frustrated players um, and uh, it, there won't be fun for anybody. So don't do that. Don't be that kind of DM that throws this stuff in the main, main way. But you can still have fun with it because they're going to be like, oh, this is an awesome door. There's got to be something good back there. And they're going to try their darndest to get through it. And if they don't, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world if they don't. So, you know, the game's not over. Um, they can still go on, but you know, you know, they gave it their best try, uh, and, and and the game continues, and everybody still has fun. But if you put it in the main, you know, in the main hall where they have to go through, and they just can't get through it uh, by some bad luck or just whatever, uh, can't think of an idea, then they're stuck, and the game's over, and it's no fun for anybody. So don't be that kind of DM. All right, so that is the door. Uh, I think it really looks good, and it's going to add a lot to, of uh, of interest to your table. And uh, thanks for joining me on uh, DM's Craft Short Tip. Hey guys, if you're really digging these videos and would like some more information or to talk to other crafters, look at the link below in the description and uh, you can join my forum on the DM's Craft. We'd love to have you and I'll see you there.